Hello, welcome. In this video, I'm going to be making something for my friend as a thank you for fixing my 3D printer. If you didn't watch the last video, I had a broken wire that stopped my extruder from extruding. So what better way to pay him back with some 3D printed talismans from Elden Ring? Using a different printer, not, not the one he fixed. Now, this is something I wanted to do since Elden Ring came out, but it's been pushed back, so now's as good as time as any, as I didn't know how long my other printer was going to be out of action. Now, I'm going to learn from my mistakes and take the references directly from the game Elden Ring. Needless to say, there's a lot of items to choose from, so it's going to be hard to narrow them down. I started off by making a short list of the talismans I wanted to make and then proceeded to attempt the boss fight I was stuck on using my terrible build. And yeah, it didn't go well. And I, I've got to admit, I mostly just use swarm of flies. Um, mostly because like... What, the punching is actually like really, really bad? Okay. Oh, yep. There we go. There we go. We did. We did. But don't worry. I don't need to win because that's not the point. The point is making the charms. So, first up is the Great Jars Arsenal. I need to understand exactly what I'm making, so a rundown of the weapons inside is greatly needed. Thankfully, I have an Alexander that I haven't finished, so I can use that as the base of the charm. Inside of the charm is a great axe, a great sword, a club mace thing, a regular sword and what looks to be a spear slash staff end. Once they're done, I need to smash the pot to make it look like it's exploding. Now, it really was a, a godsend having a uh, fully made Alexander already ready to go. It, it is kind of cheating, but hey, I've already done it. I don't want to do it a second time. As for kind of like the detailing, it was just kind of drawing just a lot of lines around the bits I highlighted to make it look like those pieces were kind of like further out than the rest of the pot. And there we go, just like that, we have a great jar arsenal done and ready to go. Next thing's up is uh, printing and painting it, so we'll see how that turns out. Now, the, the painting process was pretty simple. I painted it mostly in just like this dark grey, and then used a lighter grey to highlight some of the, the more raised spots. Once that was done, I, I painted all of the weapons in a silver, and then coated the whole thing in Nuln Oil as a recommendation from a friend. It really did kind of like bring out all of the detailing. I know all the weapons were really simple, but it kind of made them look more complicated because of the way it kind of shaded some of those flatter edges. It really came in as a MVP. I wasn't a big fan of where the cracks were though, so I proceeded to go over them with a, a, a dark black um, and kind of paint throughout the cracks to make them look more kind of like dingy and pronounced, highlighting the the bigger pieces. No, just ignore the one next to it. I mean, we're, we're moving on to that one in a second, but I just want to appreciate how good this one looks for the moment. I'm really proud of how this one showed up, um, and we'll move on to the next one. Psych. <laughs> I got COVID. Yeah, uh, this whole project got delayed a little bit and uh, I didn't record this one. So you're just gonna have to trust me, I made this one. It was kind of easy as shit anyway. Um, 
basically I, I traced over the silhouette, which is why it's a little like one sided. I then used the leftover stencils from Alexander to do the pattern going across. And that was pretty much done. There was a couple things like making it slightly curved so it's more rounded, but it's supposed to be flat anyway. So modeling done, fairly easy, uh, very quick. When it comes to painting, however, I needed to experiment a little. The talisman is a very shiny, well weathered and maybe a little tarnished. <laughs> I hate myself. I, I start with a base as closest to the colour that I'm trying to achieve and then went over with this gold to green chameleon paint using my airbrush. This stuff is supposed to be sprayed over just black, but my thinking was if I put it over a colour I already liked, it might work really well. It didn't, but it's fine. Uh, because upon trying to get this stuff out of my airbrush, I realised my airbrush cleaner didn't really work well on this stuff, which was good and bad. It was good because it gave me an idea, but it was bad because it took me triple the amount of time to clean out my airbrush, uh, and caused more issues over like weeks, like almost months. However, the idea is if I paint over this, I can then use the air blush cleaner to clean away the stuff, making it look weathered because it won't touch the shiny metallic stuff underneath. And yay, this worked actually really well. Um, I was so worried it might like just destroy everything and make it look terrible, but this really did work out well. And sure, he looks a little gross, but it's supposed to be tarnished and old and destroyed. Uh, what else is it supposed to look like? And now we can move on to Radagon's score seal. Uh, the big kind of disgusting eye pendant. Um, and thankfully I, I have some recording of me making this one. Um, it's... it's kind of gross looking but it, it, the end result looks pretty nice I, I, I guess. This design's hardest bit is those kind of exposed vein slash tendril slash rot stuff that grows around the side of it that also makes the bit that turns it into a pendant talisman. It takes forever to kind of do those and especially make them look good as well so it was just kind of a lot of using this one tool to get the desired effect. Now to my surprise they printed pretty well. Um, there's a lot of small thin things and sure I lost a couple of like the staff tops and I lost uh, maybe like a tendril or two as I was making them but I, I printed like four of these off at a time so the success rate was maybe like three and four for like Radagon score seal and the great jars arsenal uh, pop boy literally printed perfect every time I mean he was a flat pot boy what do you expect now i've got footage of me painting this guy but like there's not much point the main thing to talk about is the center iris instead of going for like really bright vibrant yellows i decided to go with metallic colors to make it look kind of shiny this is not really what it looks like in the thumbnail but i think it looks better as like a physical result instead of like the picture. Now I'm not gonna lie, it's mostly a skill issue, but once you do like the iris as the very last piece, there's no way I'm experimenting with this. I'm just gonna do it easy, reliable, and make sure it doesn't go wrong. And that's it, that's kind of the project. I know I've only done three, but uh, I think I'm gonna do more in the future, like I really like these. Um, I've got like a, a simple stand for them to go on and I think these turned out really well.